Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you are well. Um, so yeah, thank you for the, the reading about the prodigal son, uh, a story or a parable we've all probably heard many times from you know from being in Sunday school or um, just just being around. It's a very famous story. And today, um, I want to start with asking two what seem to be simple questions, um, but you might find challenging. And the first one is is this: is what is it? that makes you feel welcome? What is it that makes you feel welcome? And the second one is something similar, which is what is it that makes you feel at home? What is it that makes you feel at home? Now, I just want to share a, a quick story. And it's uh, about a it's about a famous rapper. Um, uh, and his I uh, gave a, an interview a few years ago about his struggle with religion uh, and this form of feeling accepted uh, in religion. And uh, during the interview, he was speaking about how he, he grew up a Jehovah's Witness and it was, you know, Jehovah's Witness to him was quite a strict religion in terms of how they did certain things. And he found that very difficult to maintain. And that, in a sense, made, his, made him feel a bit, I'll say frustrated with religion. and therefore he kind of went away from it and then obviously trying to search and find himself and come back into into religion and find god um he was obviously searching through different churches and uh he he never felt accepted in any of the churches and he even quoted that you know in some churches they were turning people away and that's quite um something that you, can, you might think that doesn't make sense with with churches but uh, yeah, and, and this this is the things that he experienced throughout his time, and you know he really struggled with you know what religion actually meant, what Christ, what faith was actually about. If the church where people are meant to be um, and come is turning people away, was was for him uh, quite an interesting uh, thing to understand and digest. Um, so going through different churches, um, he eventually ended up going to a, a church where he feel he felt um, accepted and he felt. That this was a, a church where he thought he could just be himself um kind of come as you are and the the types of people that he saw there weren't all of one uh ilk let's say you know there was different groups different demographics of people and for him that was one of the main things that he was looking for and the main criteria is that you know this is this is where i feel welcome and this is where i feel at home um and at that moment, uh, through you know, obviously other things in terms of being accepted by uh, the pastor and and, and etc. That for him was that 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 realization that I understand what this faith is all about. I understand that you know you're not expecting me to be at a certain level or a certain standard. That I can be me, be who I am. Um, but God, you accept me for where I am and where I'm at. And as a result, I can then move forward in, 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 in his Christian journey. And I found that interview very interesting um, because I'm sure that's something that we've all either maybe experienced or know someone that has experienced or, or heard about. Um, and that's why I asked you those two questions at the start. And that's what is it that makes you feel at home? And what is it that makes you feel welcome? Uh, because I want you guys to think about, think back to the first time that, um, that you came into church, uh, came into a church building and what that was like for you. It may have been, you know, you may have been invited by a friend or the family and it may have been a massive experience for you. It may have been daunting. It may have been enjoyable, uh, you know, and, and I know sometimes as a, as a child, you you come in and the parents kind of just usher you straight into the, the Sunday school and, and say, that's it. I don't want to see you for another hour. And that might be, that might be like, oh, I've just been tossed to the wolves. Uh, or you might just see a lot of people just coming around you and not know what's going on and it, and no one says a word to you and, and it can be really uh, seen maybe as a negative experience. Or again, you can come in and things can be things can be great. You can feel right at home. You can feel at ease and relaxed that you're in a comfortable environment. Um, and you know, I said, it will it, 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 be one of those things for, for different people. Uh, and then think about when you, first came to, to Christ and how important it was for the people around you um, to, to be to be there and the, to help you on your journey to help you um, 
in a sense, grow. Uh, and that starting point, how important it was to have those people around you that, that you needed to help you build, to help you grow. Um, and the church is one of those places that you, you feel like should be a safe place or you'd like to, to think that it is a relaxing place. Um, and you think, you know, the first time you enter any building or any environment, you would like to, to think the first thing is that welcoming. You know, if you go into a, a restaurant and no one speaks to you, you think, well, this isn't uh, you know, a, a nice place. This isn't a, probably the best place you want to sit down and eat if no one's greeting you or saying, you know, welcome in. How are you? Let me show you to your table or something like that. Um, and, you know, the, the church should feel the same. Uh, you know, if you go, like, imagine if you went to, if you went away for a long time and you come home and as soon as you come in, no one says a word and it's just silent. You know, you've been away for, a, let's say, a week. Come in and no one acknowledges you. And it's, yeah, it's just silence. And then you just go in, sit down, still no one addresses you. You know, your kids are probably just still playing, watching TV on their phones. Um, and you're just there. And you're thinking, wait, I've been gone for all this time. And you're expecting this welcome. You've come to your home you, where, where you feel, you, you expect to feel the love. You expect to feel this, this relaxation, this nice aura, this nice presence. And it's just cold. How would that make you feel? How would that make you feel? And then let's, let's flip it. Let's say you got away for a week, you come in, and as soon as you put the key or you jangle the key, you push the door, there's seven people just right on top of you, just saying, ah, oh, blah, 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 and just giving you, oh, guess what I did, oh, how's your job? And you've got all this information. People are right on you. You haven't even stepped through the door, bag still in your hands, and people are just right on top of you, um, just hitting you with this and this and this and that and this and that and this and that. And you have no time to actually get a word in, you have no time to, to think, you have no time to, to, to process how you're feeling, you have no time to process and take in the actual environment that you stepped into. You have, you're, you're just, let's say, bombarded. Now, these are two extreme examples, but I'm sure we've all probably been in a church where both of these have happened in, in different different for different reasons um and we've seen this happen it, it, again it could be in in any church um but we have to think again how would this make you feel because when you come into a when you come into a church the the one thing you have to think is they've made that decision to come into a church for whatever reason now you will not know that reason right off the bat. You will not know why someone has come to church as soon as they step in. It, it's, you know, you would assume that they've come into church to obviously find God um, and give their life to Christ. But we can't assume that they're at that moment, at that time. We don't necessarily know their walk. We don't know that they're coming in and ready to, to live their life for, for Christ they may be wanting to know more. Um, and that's that's the first step for them. We don't know where they're at. And we have to be mindful as a, a church to, to be receptive to that. Um, and thinking back to this, to, to the prodigal son, so this, this parable, we all know the, well, hopefully I said, we know the context of the story, but the main thing I wanna focus on is the actual end. So the return of the son. So in verse 20, we see the son coming back to his senses. He's squandered everything and he's at, let's say, the lowest of, of his low where he thinks. And he said, right, this is what's happened. It's time for me to go back home. And in his head, he's thinking, but how can I go home based on what I've, what I've done, how I've lived? Um, I won't be accepted back uh, you know, by my father, by everyone. And I won't go back into that same light that I once was and so he comes back but the way the father receives him we see you know he puts his robe on him he gives him the ring there's a massive feast and a massive celebration now this this is just based on on his return 
Now, the thing we see, you know, it says when the, when the son was still way off, his father ran towards him. So the father was waiting. The father was always waiting and hoping that his son would return. And when he did, the elation and the joy that came over his father caused him to probably tail off and go straight after him with that joy and elation and say, you know what? Welcome home. Welcome home. What a welcome. What a welcome this is. And you have to think, well, why, why did the father do this? It's a question that probably everyone asks when you read this parable. Why did the father react in this way? He, your son has just lost you everything. He's taken your fortune. He's run away. He doesn't want anything to do with you. And all of a sudden you've come back. He's come back and you've embraced him and thrown this celebration. And and, and we think, well, what, that doesn't make any sense. But then you read the last two verses. So the last verse in that uh, chapter, verse 32. And it says, it was right that we should be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. And as a church, we need to have this mindset of, of being welcoming to all, okay? People come from different walks of life, having gone through a lot of things that we don't know. And some they're, they're, they're looking for that place of acceptance. As a human, as human nature, we want to be accepted. We like to be involved, we like to be in. It's rare that people want to feel or want to be ostracized or on the margins of society. The majority of people want to be involved, included in something. And people come to church to look for that acceptance not just by people, but obviously, but by God. And they want to be accepted. And my question as a, as a church is, are we providing that? Are we providing that atmosphere and that environment? And if so how are we providing that for people to feel accepted um, and to feel welcome? And at times, uh, some, we, we can have that issue of this other son. Now, the other son who was you know quick to, to succumb with the quick to anger and be full of resentment saying to his dad wait hold on i've been by your side through thick and thin haven't done anything wrong in a sense faultless and blameless we can call it that yet you've never done anything you know never given me a celebration never given me a little go little calf nothing like i've i've been i've done what you asked of me so where is my reward? This is what the son's asking. Now, before I go on, I want to clarify this. And I want to ask you one question. <laughs> um, if you have your Bibles, what does Luke 5, 31, 32 say? Obviously, no one can actually physically respond to me. So I'm going to read it for you. <laughs> Luke 5, 31, 32 says, Jesus answered and said to them, those who are well, have no need for a doctor, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I'm going to read that again. Jesus answered and said to them, those who are well have no need for a doctor, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So, Jesus didn't come for those who were already believers who had faith Jesus came for those who didn't those who were searching those who were looking those who were lost and needed to be found and the church is that that vessel the church is that people that when people when other people come into we need to be the ones that are there welcoming them home accepting them as they are and then letting God do the work in them. Does that make sense? And I'm going to say that again. Jesus didn't come for those who are already believers. Jesus came for those who were sick, those who were in need of healing. That's what, God, that's what Jesus was sent for. Now, us as a church, we are in that position to, to welcome those who come in 
we are in a sense that hospital we are that that gp that gp practice for for those people that are sick that is our job that is our role and god will do the work god will do the rest god will when they're in that safe haven when they're in that safe place they need to feel accepted god's already accepted them know that god has already accepted them and it's our job to make sure that we accept them and allow god to then move in their life allow god to then build in their life cool because remember guys the church people don't come to church healed okay people do not come to church healed they come to get healed I'm not saying in, in terms of the physical sense, but spiritual sense. <clears throat> People come to get healed. So a church will not always be full of everyone raising their hands. If everyone has their hands up in church, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's an, it's an amazing, like amazing church. If everyone's hands are up and everyone's being righteous for God, it, it's a great thing. But if that one person then comes in and is not raising their hands and feels a bit of a certain way and and we don't kind of acknowledge that and accept that and saying oh they're not raising their hands they can't worship here but they're the ones that we need to to go out and get they're the ones that we need to to spend our time on does that make sense and this is what this prodigal son is about is that you won't search for it. if your child's at home you won't worry about them. you worry about the child that's not home <laughs> If your child is at home, they're sitting right next to you. If the other child is at home, they're the ones you're more likely to worry about. They're the ones you're more likely to find. Because if they're lost, you will spend your, your life, you will spend every breath trying to find this lost child and bring them home. You'll stand on the, you'll be like, that, like the father was, you'll be waiting every day, watching, hoping, searching, thinking, when are they going to come home? Trying to find them. And when they do, when they do the elation the joy the happiness the completion the fulfillment all these positive words and emotions that build up will, will, will enter you and will pull you up and make you feel like wow now i'm complete and you're you've wrapped your arms around them and the first thing you'll want to say is welcome home welcome home You'll forget in that instant anything that's gone wrong. We've probably seen many times in films, depicted in films, or we may know sometimes children that have run away, or you see it in films where someone goes away and then they're sitting there and think it's all based on like the prodigal son. They're thinking, oh, I've done this, I've done that, I can't go back, I'll never be accepted when I go home. Like Lion King, Lion, it's just come to my head. The Lion King, perfect example. Love a Disney film. That story, <laughs> that story, I'm not saying it's based on the prodigal son, but hey, you know, you have to get ideas from somewhere. Now, Simba's thinking, I've killed, I've, I've, no, I've caused my father's death. All of a sudden, he's like, I can't go home. They won't accept me for as I am. He comes home. The welcome isn't that great, but you see where I'm going with this. He comes home and it's a welcoming home. When he comes back, it's, he, he's welcome. He's welcome home. And everyone's like, wow, Simba has returned. The prodigal son is back. And, you know, yeah, the rest is history. What an example that is. But the whole point of this is to understand <laughs> that we don't need to worry so much about what's happening inside the church. People that are inside the church, like your regular members, I'm not saying that everything's fine, but they're there. They're there. They're there. So you know, they're already home. <laughs> the people like our, our brothers and sisters that are not like, you know, we're all God's children. So our brother, there are brothers and sisters out there that are lost. <laughs> Am I right? There are brothers and sisters out there that are lost that we need to go and find and bring them home. That's the mandate. But we can't do that if we're still focused on making sure everyone's got their hands raised in church, that everyone's tithing, that everyone's doing this. Like we, we need to, to kind of get this, this mindset of not allowing, not, not making people feel like they can't just enter into a church. Remember, there are no qualifications to come into church. You do not need A-levels to come into church. Cool. 
You do not need A-levels to come into church. You don't need a degree. There's no CV. You don't have to send a CV through to, to Matthew or something to say, can I come in to church at some point? You just come. You just come as you are and allow God to do the rest. Allow God to do the rest. Remember, I said, we are all God's children. The father didn't focus and he said to the son, you've been with me all the time. Like, I see you all the time. It's not that I don't worry about you, but you're here. I need to find the ones that are lost. We all know the parable. That, that, those, that parable is part of a set, you know, that set of the lost coin and the lost sheep. So yeah, lost son, lost coin, lost sheep. You know, they go bend like you lose the coin, 10 coins, and you lost the coin. You go you're going crazy just to find that one coin. 99 sheep are safe. That one sheep that's missing, that one sheep that goes missing. God is going, like, I, need, I need to find the sheep. I need to find that lost sheep. I don't feel complete until that sheep is home. That's how God feels about every single one of his children. Everyone needs to understand that you know we are responsible for our brothers and sisters out there that we need to go and find them but when they come in we need to accept them as they are we need to understand that we were all once in that in that we were once that lost time we were all once turning away from god we've all probably ran away from god at some point and we've lived our own lives we've all probably done this it's part of the testimony and we have to accept that everyone is on that journey that we were on, but we need to bring them in. We need to make sure that we accept that and say, you know, I know where you are, that's fine. And allow God to bring them forward. Allow God, and that we, we sang about this foundation, this cornerstone, allow them to get that foundation and that cornerstone in Christ. You know, we can't physically meet in a church, let's say, but we have so many available options to, to make sure that people still feel welcome, that they feel accepted. Um, you know, being on a, on a Zoom call, being on a, on, on, a, on a chat, on a FaceTime, whatever, you know, meeting in, a, in smaller groups, you know, having little Bible studies, um, these prayer triplets that we were talking about earlier. All of this stuff is a way of, yeah, we can still physically meet, but you need to make making sure that we, you know, we accept people for who they are. And it's just simple conversation. It's just simple conversation. We may not be able to meet physically, but we can still talk. We can still communicate. And that's how you find out. And that's how people feel accepted. Just listen. Just listen to people. It's a simple, it's not like a simple message, but it's probably one of the hardest things to do is to actually listen to people without having this thing in your mind and thinking, oh, I'm, I'm listening, but I've already made a decision that this is what your problem is. No, listen. Allow God to interpret for you. <laughs> but we need to stick to this, yeah, this come as you are mindset and this be as you are mindset and allow people to be as they are. Be as they are. Tell people, you know, come as you are. There's no prerequisite for, for Christ. There's no prerequisite for, to come into church. Faith is the thing that's brought them in. Faith is the thing that will continue to build them. And as, as a church, we need to be, to be on the same page. We need to have that same Christ mindset. You know, Christ came for all those that were innocent sinners, you know, the tax collectors, the, the Pharisees, the uneducated, all these people is what, these are the ones that, that Christ came for. These are all the, these are the people that we as a church need to make sure we don't leave behind because we think that we're, we're not capable of, of bringing, of, of working with them or capable of looking after them or that we, we have the power. The power is inside us. The power is, is, is God. The power is Christ. So I've said enough. Um, I can go on for this for, for days, <laughs> but the main, the main thing I want to, to, to end on is the the three different people in that in that prodigal son um, and in terms of prayer I just want to make I just want to speak to 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 you guys out there and think and I want you to think you know you might be thinking you know what I'm like the other son I have that 
say that resentment in me sometimes and thinking that I haven't got my like my reward yet and as you sang earlier Christ is your reward that's the reward <laughs> yeah that that's the riches you can't get anything better than that and yeah we need to kind of flip that mindset and understand that you know when when something is lost and is found that joy should fill us that joy we shouldn't have that resentment of oh they left and now they've come back like how can we treat how can we you know it's this this thing of forgive and forget that we don't manage to do yeah like, oh i can't forget it, but they've done this you shouldn't you can't forget that and that seeps into us and if that's you then 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 i want to pray for you now to get to to kind of get rid of that that's that seed of resentment and allow God to yeah really you know impact you and, and open that heart to forgive and forget and repent. Um, and I just want to say say that prayer now. Uh, and if that's you, then then feel free to repeat this this prayer with me. And Father, yeah, I, I want to thank I want to thank you that you know we we do that you are kind of governing our lives. And Father, those times where we may feel resentment and anger towards our fellow brothers and sisters, Father, we know that that is not of you. And my prayer now is that you, know, you will remove any seeds of frustration replace that with a seed of compassion a seed of, of empathy and understanding that we are all your children Father, you are the head of everything you are head of our church Father, you are our reward and that's the only reward that we need Help us to be more like the Father was. Quick to forgive, quick to forget, quick to uplift, and quick to restore, quick to accept. Help us to understand that we are all on our own journey. Father, you are the ultimate acceptor. And when we search for, for those that are lost and they do come home, Lord, I pray that we are their biggest welcomers. That they feel at home, they feel relaxed, they feel safe in your house. And those that may feel like they are like the son, the actual, the, the, the son who doesn't feel like they can return. Like they've, they've gone so far away that to them, to you, it's impossible to even think of coming back for fear of not being accepted or not being loved anymore. I'm here to tell you that that's not true. I'm here to tell you that you can come home that I may tell you that God is, is waiting. God is watching over the hills every day, every minute, waiting for you to, to, to come over that hill so he can run, sprint to you and wrap you in his arms and say, welcome home. Welcome home. And if that's you, then my prayer for you is that this is the, that, that the pin is dropped that realization and that 180 degree turn will happen. That you will go closer, that you will not continue to go further and, and think that it's too late. I'm, I've gone too far to turn back now. Like we just sang, you know, we have decided to follow Jesus. Once you, there's no turning back.
God is waiting for you with open arms. And when one of us, even one, comes home, that's a cause for celebration. That's a cause for celebration. The heavens are rejoicing when one, one of us, come home. That's a celebration in heaven. When two of us, it's a double celebration. And you see how amazing it would be when heaven, heaven's a big party. In my head, that's what I see. Heaven's a big party where everyone's just coming home and it's just, yeah, amazing. And that's how it is for one person. Imagine when there's just a chorus of people, it's just going to be amazing. But if that's you, if you feel like, ah, oh, they won't celebrate for me. No, they will. God will celebrate for you. And us as a church, a church family will celebrate for you. And my prayer is that you understand and you realize that God is your ultimate acceptor and you find a, a church that will yet yeah, will be open and will accept you and help you grow and grow closer to God. That's my prayer. Amen. Amen. Guys, I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, that was, um, I enjoyed that. <laughs> So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll head into some the time of, uh, of worship now with Helen and Marco. Guys, stay blessed.